my 38th rental car and today I'm driving the 2017 Ford Edge Titanium with all-wheel drive and EcoBoost. I was pretty excited to get behind the wheel of this one because it includes the 301A configuration package and that essentially means it comes with a bunch of extras. All-wheel drive, a hands-free foot gate where you just swipe your foot under the back door and it opens up automatically, a panoramic vista roof, blindside detection, and remote start. When you include all those features, the MSRP on this car comes to about $39,590. That's quite a bit of change for a mid-sized crossover, but I like this one quite a bit. So let me give you a few more details. This seat's five, two in the front, three squeezed pretty tight in the back. The engine on this is not a V6. This has the two liter EcoBoost with a twin scroll turbocharger. Gets better gas mileage and has some pretty nice acceleration. The horsepower is 245 and your miles per gallon is 20 in the city and 29 on the highway. And I am not alone in loving this car. Edmunds gave it a 4.2 out of 5, pretty high for them. US News and Reports gave it an 8.5 out of 10 and Car and Driver gave, a, gave it a solid 4 out of 5. But enough with the background details, let's actually take a look at this car. The Edge comes with Ford's new Easy Fuel system, so as long as you open up the gas cap, there's no twist-off cap that you have to do in addition. You just open it up, shove in the fuel pump, and you're ready to go. And here's the hands-free foot-activated lift gate. It's quite a mouthful. But essentially, all you have to do is swipe your foot right here below the rear bumper. Just one time. I made the mistake of trying to swipe my foot multiple times. One time, and the back door pops up automatically. This is great when your hands are full, but you can also close the door with just a swipe of your foot as well. And once you get back here, you'll notice that there's actually quite a bit of room. Um, it's a pretty sizable storage area. There is no third row seat, so this is all cargo room. And you do get electronic controls to sort of fold down those uh, back seats as well. It's kind of a shock though. It just sort of collapses like that all of a sudden. Let me show that again. It just falls just like that. And unfortunately the button does not bring the seats back up. You have to do that manually. So you can upgrade to a V6, but this model does not have it. As I mentioned before, this has the 2 liter EcoBoost engine with a twin scroll turbocharger. It's a mouthful, but it does give you some decent acceleration and some exceptional gas mileage. But enough with the outside of this car, let's jump in and take a look at all the really nice features that Ford has recently added to the Edge. You can see that everything is designed pretty nicely. I'm especially impressed with the center console. I feel like they took a lot of time designing this because it feels very crisp and fresh. There's not a whole lot of wasted space and everything really feels like it's in the right spot. The steering wheel is the same. You get a bunch of buttons here. You have kind of joysticks both on the left and the right side, along with buttons right here to activate the cruise control, and then additional buttons here to uh, adjust the volume and also interact with your phone. But these two kind of keypads on the left and right side are because in the center dash, right here in the gauge cluster, you do get two separate digital screens. One on the left and one on the right. And it's really nice because you can cycle through a lot of different screens and see a lot of different things going on with the vehicle. To the left you also see that you have the standard buttons to interact with the windows and your mirrors. You have the lock and unlock button with three different programmable settings for the seats. And then you have a dial and some additional buttons to interact with the headlights. Um, the center console the very end top includes a nice storage space right here, which is actually pretty deep. Directly below that you get the touch screen, which is a decent size. If you'll see, I can't cover it up with my hand. And it also has some pretty nice dedicated menu buttons right here on the bottom, which make it really easy to jump over and to the screens Lego that you like. Robotics program. CPS is also sent like the climate controls, your phone, navigation, etc. This also includes their uh, downloadable apps, so technically you could add additional features to this if you like. Directly below there is the climate controls, which are decent. They're not the best, but they're pretty good. My main complaint here is that to adjust the temperature and the fan, you have to kind of reach around the gear shift. So if you pull the gear shift out of the way while you're driving, you still kind of have to reach down here, which is slightly annoying. I also 
don't like that there's no digital readout down here to tell you exactly what temperature the car is. So to see that, you have to look back up at the touch screen. It's right here and right here because you can't adjust two separate uh, temperatures for this vehicle. And when you press the fan, for instance, you do get a nice pop-up. Shows you how strong the fan is going, along with another pop-up to show you what temperature you're setting. But if you want to do basic things like switch where the vents are blowing, you have to go into the climate settings, and then you can adjust whether the, fan, the vents on the top are going to blow, vents on the bottom are going to blow, or both. You also have to go into this menu to get into your defrost settings. It's not a huge, it's not a huge pain, but I would much rather prefer some dedicated buttons right here. Well, while I'm driving, I can just quickly hit it and be done. Storage space up here is pretty good. You get this nice dedicated spot down here for your cell phone. It's pretty deep. And there are two USB ports to connect your phone to the car. I guess my only complaint is that this area is pretty deep, so when you put your cell phone down there, it kind of falls down towards the bottom, and you do have to reach quite a ways to, to get at it. It's also directly behind the gear shift, so it's kind of difficult to reach while you're driving. The glove box is a pretty decent size. You can store well more than just your uh, owner's manual and insurance cards, so that's a nice plus. And then you also get a center console that you can lift up and has two different shelving units. So you got this thing right here to uh, store your rods and ends, and then down here you get a pretty deep cavernous hole to store all your rods and ends. And then you also get a nice 12 bolt uh, charging port right here, and then a shelf right here, which I'm assuming is a perfect spot to keep your change. The key fob for this vehicle is actually really nice. It has a great weight to it, and then all the buttons are taking up some pretty decent real estate, which I like because that means it's easy to find everything. So you have lock and unlock. Uh, this is the remote start feature, and then this is the feature to open up the back uh, gate so that you can store everything in the back pretty easily. All in all, I'm a big fan of this. The car also has a push-button start, which is nice. And then you also get an electronic parking brake. So you just pull it up to activate the parking brake and then push it down to deactivate the brake. It does include blindside detection. You can see it all the way on the left hand side where you see that little icon for a small car. There's a, yellow, a small yellow light that will illuminate when there's a vehicle in your blindside. Uh, this is not the best one I've seen out there because in the best ones, when you put on your turn signal and there's someone in your blind spot, It'll actually beep at you and let you know it's not safe to change lanes. But this car does not have that feature. All that happens when you turn on your turn signal is the yellow light will flash briefly to let you know that you probably shouldn't turn at that instance. The back seat is fairly roomy. It's actually pretty comfortable back here, too. You do get a center armrest that includes two small cup holders. It folds down nicely, and there's actually a little bit of room underneath, so you can rest your elbow here if you wanted to. In the center console, you do get two dedicated air vents back here for your passengers. This model also includes heated seats for your passengers. And then you get two 12-volt, actually this is 110-volt power ports back here. 110-volt is probably the nicest because it's actually a three-pronged plug, which means that your passengers can just plug in their electronic devices and not have to worry about bringing an adapter. Legroom is also pretty nice. I'm not sure if you can tell, but I'm six feet tall and I have actually plenty of legroom. I'm really pushing forward to get my legs to hit that front seat. One of the nicest features about sitting in the back is you really get the full view of this panoramic vista roof. And that's their words, not mine. But you can kind of tell just how big this thing is. So here's it opening up. We'll see that there's actually two sections. So you got this big section right here in the front, and then another section right here in the back. So really, almost the entire roof is glass, which is really beautiful. And then here's a quick view of the sunroof from the outside. Kind of get a feel for just how large it really is. 
want to point out one more thing, and that's the locks on the car door. You know, typically you get like a knob that comes up and down when the doors are locked or unlocked, or on a lot of the cars they sort of have a little lock right here on the door handle. But Ford has removed that and removed this from the top of the door and just added a small red LED. So when the doors are locked, let's see if we can lock it. The red light actually illuminates. It's hard to show. Ah, oh, there it goes. See the red light? And then when the doors are unlocked, obviously that goes away. It's kind of a fun little feature. Driving the titanium is actually pretty nice. As I mentioned before, this doesn't have a V6, but I really feel like I'm accelerating at a really nice clip. The handling, going around some pretty tight corners right now, is really good. It hugs the road extremely nicely. I don't feel like I'm slipping in any way. Both the back and the front tires really hug the road really nicely. All right, so that's the 2017 Ford Edge Titanium. I gotta say, I'm a pretty big fan of this car. It's definitely one of my favorites. If I was gonna get a score, it'd definitely be a five out of five. I really don't think there's much more they can do to improve this car. Um, also wanna let you know that I, I filmed this one using my cell phone just as a trial. It's kinda nice to be able to talk about the car as I'm actually driving it. So let me know in the comments if this is good or bad. I'm sure it's a little shaky and the sound probably isn't as quite as good as it used to be. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope you join me next time when I rent my 39th rental car.